I'm kind of. Okay, give me one more at least. Let's see, because we got a few more people waiting, and then I'll probably call, call you back. But what's the other one? Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Because this one's very long. Uh, I one, took a long time with this one. Yeah. Was there a way for the Gentiles uh, to be saved in the Old Testament? Of course. If you have your read First Kings chapter eight, when Solomon erected the temple, read that entire chapter. It's a long chapter. He he built that temple with the hopes that if anyone among the nations realizes that the God of Israel is true and he turns towards the direction of that temple because he believes God's presence in there, God would hear that Gentile and forgive him and receive him into himself. Okay. So first Kings chapter eight, the entire chapter tells you one of the functions of the temple was for the priest to make sacrifices for the sins of all the nations in the hopes that if anyone from the nations turned towards the direction of the temple in recognition that the God of Israel is a true God and his presence was there in a special way and that he acknowledged the God of Israel as his God, God would receive his prayer and forgive him and grant him salvation. It's right there in 1 Kings chapter 8. Okay, so... Just so I'm clear here, in First Kings chapter eight, the, the entire, entire chapter, chapter you got to read it. Yeah. In fact, let me give you an article on this I wrote. Go ahead, you're saying that. Go ahead. It even back then, even though we were not Jews or Israelites or whatever you want to, we weren't God's chosen people. We still had access to His salvation and of His course. mercy and His grace. What What's the point of the entire Old Testament? What we just read. What was this point? What was the point of all these verses? What did God want? The point was to make it, uh, set the example through Israel, yeah. or the Israelites, or the Jews, however you want to look at it, was to set the example for them and then bring everybody else exactly. to them. And so what if people among the nations then turn to the God of Israel and turn towards the direction of the temple because they believed, okay, that temple is the house of the God of Israel. His presence is there in a unique way. And I'm going to turn towards the temple because I acknowledge their God is my God. What do you think God would do? He's a loving and merciful God, so I'd imagine he'd say you're forgiven. Not imagine. That's First Kings 8. It's right there. <laughs> I just gave you the articles. They would be forgiven. God would accept them and bless them as long as they focused on the God of Israel and sought his favor. Here it is. I just sent you the links to the articles. In fact, let me prove that to you from the story of Jonah. Jonah. What did you what what happened to the Ninevites when Jonah preached to them? And at his preaching, they repented, where the king and all the people and the animals put on sackcloth as a sign of mourning and fasted. It says God forgave them and relented from destroying them. So are we to assume that that means that though God relented from destroying them and forgave them, they weren't saved? Or is that a sign of God's favor and salvation to that particular generation who recognized the God of Jonah as the true God? That would be a reconciliation or a uh, forgiveness. So there you go. It's right there. Right? Okay. So in the Old Testament, you see... God is saving people from the nations. In fact, in 2 Kings chapter 5, let me give you another one. 2 Kings chapter 5, it's a long one, so I'm just summing up because it's too long. In 2 Kings chapter 5, it says that there was the, <clears throat> the general, the commander of the army of Syria. His name was Naaman or Naaman. Naaman or Naaman, however you want to pronounce it. Now, Syria was one of the nations that was a thorn in the side of Israel and of Judah. Naaman had leprosy, leprosy of the skin. He was told that there's a prophet in Judah that could heal leprosy, Elisha. So he goes and meets Elisha. He travels from Syria to the land of Israel. Elisha sends a servant to tell Naaman, Naaman, dip yourself in the Jordan River seven times. Naaman dipped himself seven times in the Jordan River, came out and was healed miraculously his skin became fresh like that of a newborn baby. And then he realized that the God of Elisha is the true God, that the God of Israel is the true God. But then hit something interesting happens. Go to 2 Kings chapter 5, read verses 15 to 19. 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 15 to 19. Guys, I'm giving you the links to all these articles. There are three articles. One is a two-parter. Here's one more. Here's a third one. That's a third one. 
How about this? How did the how did God in the Old Testament save the Gentiles? Two Kings chapter five, what verses again? Verses fifteen to nineteen. And here's the other article, brother. I just sent you the links to all three. Okay, thank you. Now read that for me. Second Kings five, fifteen to nineteen. And then he returned to the man of God, and uh, sorry, he and all his company, and he came and stood before him, and he said, Behold, I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. So accept now a present from your servant. But he said, As the Lord lives, whom I serve, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. Then Naaman said, If not, I beg you, let there be given to your servant two mules, burden of earth, for henceforth your servant will not offer burnt offering or sacrifice to any god but the Lord. Mm -hmm. In this matter, may the Lord pardon your servant when uh, my master goes into the house of Rimen to worship there, leaning on my arm. And I bow myself in the house of Rimen. When I bow myself in the house of women, the Lord pardon your servant in this matter. He said to him, go in peace. Now, let me explain what he was saying here. Naaman said, I'm going to give you a gift for what you did for me. And Elijah said, no, I'm not going to accept anything from you because God healed you. I didn't. It was God who healed you because I didn't do anything. Then now notice what Naaman asked. Guys, pay attention. This is something very important for you guys. Learn your theology. Naaman says to Elisha, I want some dirt from Israel. Because why? This land is the land of your God given to you. So I want a remnant of this land, a part of your land to take with me so that I will then put it on, you know, in the ground, on his house, wherever. And that will be consecrated. And I will then offer sacrifices to your God on that dirt that you've given me, because that dirt comes from the land that your God has given you. But I ask for one favor. My king will enter into the temple of his God, Riman, to worship Riman. I acknowledge it's the God of Israel that's the true God, not Riman. However, I have to accompany him and bow with him. Even though my heart, I don't worship Ramon because he's not a true God. In my heart, I'll be worshiping your God, who's the only true God. Allow me to do this so that your God won't punish me. And then Elijah said, you're free. Go in peace. Do as you desire. You see that? That's 2 Kings 5, 15, 19. Mm -hmm. So was Naman saved? Yes. yes. Naaman, Naman was saved. Did he acknowledge that the God of Israel is the only true God? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did he acknowledge Ramon, the God of his king, the king of Syria, was a false god? Yes. But was he still allowed to attend the king and go with the king into the temple of the king's false god and bow with him, even though in his heart he's worshiping the God of Israel? Yes. And did God pardon for that? Yes. There you go. That's how they were saved. Cool. Once you acknowledge the true God, and in the articles I gave you, you'll find that there was a practice of the high priest to offer 70 bulls over a span of time. And according to Jewish tradition, this is in my articles, and I give you the citations. I gave them in the, in the links. Jewish tradition, the reason why 70 bulls were sacrificed over a period of time, well, I, 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 again, I, the exact period of days escapes my mind. Lord willing, I'll do a session on it is because the priest was offering a sacrifice for the 70 nations of the world. Why? Because if you go to Genesis 10 and you count the table of nations, there are 70 total. And so Jewish tradition says that God required the high priest to offer 70 bulls for the sins of the 70 nations, just in case any one of those nations or people among those nations turned to the true God and repented so that their sins would be atoned for. It's in my articles that I sent you the links to. So I hope that answered the question.